Um, so this is work, um, I would say, very preliminary work, um, and uh, maybe Javier set the set the bar very high, and uh, now we, we we go to South Africa, and uh, it's um, some similarities, but he's uh, stolen some of the some of the things we're going to talk about already. So, um, but we should chat afterwards also to see how the comparison works. Um, so this is work on top income inequality in South Africa, and this is evidence from this uh, administrative uh, tax data. It's individual level tax data in South Africa. Um, and this work is with a PhD student, Chandra Jacobs at the University of Cape Town, um, Marie Lebrandt who's at, at UCT, and then uh, Yuka and Marlies Pick, who's with us at UNU wider. So, uh, if you attended some of the presentations uh, about South Africa yesterday, you already know inequ income inequality is persistently high in South Africa. Um, and a big part of the discussion yesterday uh, about uh, in income inequality was um, about the data and how to get reliable estimates, uh, which you know, data sources give us um, what we want to find. Um, and so a lot of the empirical work in South Africa is focused on survey data and household incomes. Um, and then, as Javier said, um, the challenge here is always under-reporting or non-response at the top end of the income or the distribution. Now, tax data provides us with better coverage at the top uh, at the top income or the top end of the distribution. But then, of course, it's got this you know little coverage at the bottom, and that's always going to be your shortcoming. Best case scenario. You merge survey data with the tax data, and there are there's at least one paper where they try and use both survey data and tax data. They don't actually merge it. Um, it's not yet possible to do this in South Africa, but we hope uh, in the future that this is something that you you know we can maybe another project for a PhD student to start uh, thinking about. Um, so what's our contribution here? Here we're thinking about measuring income inequality. This is for South Africa, so in the formal sector. Um, for income earners, and then now we've got this period, so pre-pandemic, uh, 2011 to 2018, um, and using this sort of new individual level um, tax data. Um, what else do you want to add here? Okay. So I'll tell you a little bit about the data. The data, the data set has two main sources. This is uh, information from the payroll. Um, and so for South Africans in the room, this is IRP5 data. So this is information that firms report to the tax authorities. This is then merged with personal uh, assessed data, so self-reported um, data or self-reported uh, tax assessments that you send to the tax authority or ITR12 records. Um, and so here you get the the, the income earners and well those who also are self-employed. I think I mean like one of our advantages here is actually coverage of the top incomes and so our focus is a little bit in that direction and we've only very recently sort of moved in that direction um, as recently as last week um, and but the coverage of the top incomes we think is sort of what we want to you know, focus on in this in this work, um, and then if there are any ideas, I touch on the sort of pan panel element, um, and so I'd like to hear, if, at least from the crowd, hopefully, if there are any thoughts on what we can do um, with the panel element of the data. Unfortunately, uh, with tax data, um, especially at the top end, there's uh, problems of tax avoidance and tax evasion, um, and we don't touch too much on this, but this is something just to keep in mind um, as we do. The analysis. Okay, so this is our overall sort of income distribution um, graph or K density for um, for the for the panel period that we have, um, and this is real gross income for each tax tax year, uh, and it looks like this sort of the slight shift um, in the distribution to the right over time, um, and then these these little peaks over here that we need to still a little bit investigate. I know it's not driven by business income. We tried to remove that uh, last week. Um, but it might be some either round number bunching or there might be some kinks in the tax schedule that's kind of driving this. Um, so we, you know, this is at the, the stage that we're, we're at thinking at the moment. Here are the real income, um, real income in percentiles. So we've got the 10, the 50, or the 25, the 50, the 75, your 90, and your 99. Um, and then all except the 99 are 
um, this axis. Um, and so for the period that we're looking at, we're not seeing um, a lot of um, income growth. It's quite sort of flat. Uh, when you hit the 75th percentile, so this kind of starts to go up, and you can see this here. Um, the scale is, of course, different for the 99th percentile, but you are seeing this sort of um, income growth uh, right at the top. And this is not um, a new story. There are, you know, research, um, pre well, previous research, but from earlier periods, it kind of shows that this is sort of what's going on in the South African context. In terms of the Gini coefficient, so uh, our before tax Gini, let's see if I can swap hands. So our before tax Gini over here is around 0.64, and then after tax, it's about 0.61. Um, and at least this squares up quite nicely with the survey data at the sort of 0.64. This is sort of what we saw yesterday in some of the presentations. Um, and then um, it was nice to see Javier's uh, presentation of the sort of, you know, what you can start to think about in terms of uh, tax reforms, um, in terms of changing this kind of distribution. We haven't got to that stage yet. This is just sort of where, um, where we want to point to um, in the different uh, estimations, yeah. In terms of the top income shares over time, um, so there's a paper by Marie, uh, by Marie Lebrandt and co-authors. Um, they use survey data and they show that, um, I think this is for the period 1993 to 2008, so kind of just before, well, before, this, before this period. And they show that um, income has be become increasingly concentrated at the top. Um, and this is, the story kind of continues, like we, this hasn't really changed much in the South African context. Um, so what do I want to say about this graph? So for your top 10%, we're looking at 48%, uh, around 48, closer to 50% um, of income. And for your top 0.1%, so 0. Yeah, so 0.1%, it's looking at about 4%, uh, it's capturing about 4% of the total income. Now, in the tax data, um, well, in the tax data in South Africa, we don't have a ton of demographic uh, characteristics. Uh, we know where people, well, you know the age of individuals, and we know their gender. Um, and so, this is the one one way we've um, thought about slicing the data um, in terms of sort of looking at the, within the uh, males and then within females and then top income groups. Um, so, I think the one thing to to point out here um, is that in the, at the beginning of the period, in 2011, uh, there are far more men in the data set than there are women, but the numbers actually equalize quite a bit um, later on for these top um, income groups. Um, so the Gini for men, Gini coefficients for men uh, are the blue lines for the top 10%, the top 1%, and the top 0.1%, and you can see they are a bit higher than those for women, except Mia at the bottom. Um, and then I think the one other thing that we might want to sort of tease out a little bit here um, is that the, the, there's a slight increase in the income share there's a slight increase in the income share for women. I think at some point I've said genie, but I meant income share. Okay, so this is our, comp so I guess some of the other interesting things um, uh, that you can think about in the tax data is that you actually have different sources or source codes for each of the incomes, and this is quite well reported in the in South African tax data. Uh, maybe the one thing that's missing from this data, and we sort of have some of it, is around dividend income. And so that's something we still need to think about. Um, but in terms of um, earnings and interest, uh, business income, capital gains, um, this is sort of um, what we expected to see where the business income and capital gains kind of becomes more uh, important in the higher deciles. We break this down a little bit further. We look this at this top 10%. 10 um, this becomes a lot more prominent. So we see this business income um, becoming uh, a lot more important. Um, and then, of course, the capital gains, um, particularly for this 0.1% uh, uh, group. Yeah. So 
this is the the part that I think is a little bit underexplored, um, and we want to put a little bit of thinking into this um, yet. Um, um, so we literally started looking at this this week. Um, I think the main, so this is a transition matrix, so what we, uh, where um, people are at in 2011 versus 2018, um, and then this is the sort of your zero to 90%, um, and then your top 10% that's broken down. Um, and the majority, stay here at the bottom between these two periods. Um, but I think the, I mean, the overall message that we're getting from this was that uh, mobility for the formal sector top income earners is actually quite low. Um, almost 65% of individuals um, in the 99th percentile actually stay sort of um, in, the, in the top 1%. So if you look at here, yeah, this is sort of getting to this, um, they kind of remain in this after, I mean, what is this, eight or nine years um, of the tax data. So, summary, um, this is, um, so we, we, I mean, inequality remains high. This is not, um, we're not, you know, presenting some kind of new radical story about this, um, but we do think it's, consistent, um, driven by high income, high and maybe growing incomes at the top end of the distribution. Uh, there's not much uh, inequality between gender, but that's not something that we, we see. Um, I think one important thing to mention um, in the South African context is that race uh, plays a big factor here. And this is not something that we can actually do in the tax data. You don't need to report your, tax, your race to the tax authorities. That's something um, they collect as such. Um, but for us, we want to at least look at, um, do some comparisons on some of the earlier estimates. We have a little bit uh, of information about regions, so where people are located. So we might want to think about um, how, that, uh, how that changes from place to place, um, but we're definitely open to hearing more ideas. Um, thank you.